Good morning. morning. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, and all that is within me. So there's some stuff on the inside. It needs to bless God too. Oh, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Do you ever get up and feel like, you know what? This is going to be a good day. This is going to be, you just decide in your mind it's going to be a good day. Well, I've made a decision this morning. It's going to be a good day. Let me let you in on the secret. I made a decision a while ago when I found out that God was good. Because if God is good and he allows you to see a day and everything God does is good because God is good. So it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, that's better than saying it's going to be a bad day. Amen. Oh, this is a bad day. Well, you, you framing your world already. Well, again, this morning, we greet those of us, those that may be with us this morning via social media. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. We pray that this indeed will be a day that the Lord will bless you to encounter his presence in. Amen. Thank God for our guests that are with us on this morning as we do have a baby dedication. Amen. The Bible says the children are a heritage from the Lord. Yes. You, if, you, if you had a baby, got a baby, you know they was loaned to you by God. Yes. Ain't that something? That's my baby. No, it ain't. It's loaned to you. So hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Let's get ready to go into the word of God. Amen. I'm just, I'm just excited this morning. Um, let me share something with you, I, I believe, prophetically before we get started. Uh, this morning I was up and I was kind of preparing and looking to do some things. And I began to look and, and I was watching how the wind was boisterous. It was just, uh, if, you, if you were up before, you know, some of us get up a little later than other people. But if you were up relatively early, it was very, very windy. And I was sitting there and I was just listening and watching the wind. And I felt uh, that the Lord spoke to me or shared with me or impressed on me, if you will, that the winds of change are blowing. The winds of change are blowing. Things may look the same, but there's a change. And I want to submit to you that within these next four to six months, you're going to see the changes that have blown in. So you just hold on to that, and we will see. This morning, I want to speak with you from the topic, experiencing kingdom increase when bad is really good. Experiencing kingdom increase when bad is really good. Now, I know some of you all may be looking this morning, what is he talking about? Well, let's, let's, let's go here. Let's go to the word of God for a moment. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So even the things that we go through that may seem bad are working let me see if I can find a little, a little support somewhere else in the scriptures since I ain't getting it right here, but it's okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. The Bible says, and we know. So here's something we ought to know. That all things, not some, not some, that all things work together for good. For good. So... I know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Do you love it? That it's working for good. It's not the way we like to say it. It's working for my good because we make us personal. So, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. So if you love God and you called according to his purpose, it's working together for good. 
It is inherent in our nature, however, to assume that something we do not like or that causes discomfort is bad. In other words, I remember as a child growing up, it's different now. You know, the things are just so much different. My, my little grandbaby is helping enlighten me on so many different things. When I was a child, you would have to catch me to give me medicine. Now, some of y'all can relate to this because when we were growing up, medicine wasn't flavored. I know I'm dating myself and some of you all. See, when we were growing up, we had things called castor oil. And castor oil wasn't flavored. It comes to that. You, 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 know, you know the season has changed because it's time to break the castor oil out. And they was going, you know, they're going to make sure you wasn't all sick. See, we weren't missing all them school days and stuff. You know, we weren't going. They slapped that stuff in us. St- but see, the thing about it was you had to catch me because it tastes so bad. So something that tastes so bad, done so good. See, it's inherent in our nature that anything we do not like or that causes us discomfort, we want to call it bad. So see, as a kid, I felt that castor oil was bad because it tastes bad. It tastes real bad. So you had to catch me if you wanted me to take that castor oil even though it was for my good. Well, I am learning that everything that we think is bad in the kingdom of God is not. So I'm talking about experiencing kingdom increase when bad is really good. Are you ready now? Let's go into the word. As I read, I want you to go to Genesis chapter 45, verses 5 through 7. Let's start off there. Genesis chapter 45. Now, while you're going to Genesis 45, thank you. Genesis chapter 45, verse 5. Now, I want you to look at something and think about this. Think about a 17-year-old boy who's experiencing some of the most traumatic things in life. Let's think about the fact that this 17-year-old boy is thrown into a pit. I don't know about you, but I've, I've fallen into a hole before and couldn't get out. It ain't no joke. I mean, honestly, well, you feel like you're being buried alive. Well, Joseph was thrown into a pit. He couldn't get out. After he's gotten out, he's sold. When he's sold, what that means, he's a slave now. So Joseph, when he gets out of the pit that he couldn't get out of by himself, no longer has any rights. Lost all his rights coming up out the pit. Then, and we, we know the story. Then he goes into Potiphar's house. And we, bese- we begin to see Joseph do a little well, do well. But you know he's somebody else's servant. No matter what he's over, he still belongs to somebody else. I mean, he's a young boy away from his own home, away from his family. And now you're a slave. So he starts to do pretty good. But then somebody lie on him. You know, it's always somebody that just, for whatever reason, they want to say something that just ain't true. Don't like what you're doing. Don't like seeing you progress. Don't like you seeing coming into your own. So you get lied on. Here's a young boy who's a slave, who has no rights, who's away from his own family, who's now lied on. Well, of course, nobody stands up for him. So he ends up in prison. So now you're away from home, you're a slave, you have no rights, you're in prison now. So now you're a criminal. You know everybody innocent in prison. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah, everybody innocent. Man, I ain't do it. Well, Joseph was telling the truth. He really was innocent. Didn't do it. If you read the story about Joseph, Joseph tells the, uh, the uh, uh, butler, he says, listen, When you get to Pharaoh, can you remember me and just mention me to him because I really didn't do nothing. He was really innocent. Paraphrasing the story, but you can read it and you'll see what I mean. So he shares his innocence. 
Well, I want to fast forward and look at something here because all of that was bad. It's bad to be 17 years old, stripped from your own home. It's bad to be thrown in prison and labeled a criminal. Bad to be forgotten for two years while you're still in prison, begging for folk to look out for you. All of that's bad. Let's talk for a moment then. You with me? Genesis chapter 45, verse 5. If we're going to experience, and this is my first point here, if we're going to experience kingdom increase when bad is really good, I believe one of the first things we have to realize is do not judge the bad before you know the end. Do not judge the bad before you know the end. We are quick to judge something because we don't like it. You know, you, 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 you run out the house, you running late. And it seemed like, you're like, why didn't my alarm clock go off? Man, I can't believe that. And you are hot. You know, your blood pressure has spiked. you sitting at the light. You can't wait till it turn green. And then you get to the next intersection where you look at your watch and you realize, usually about 8.15, I'm right here. But you recognize that there's some blue lights up there. And they're just swirling around. And there's an ambulance off to the side. Whereas if you would have been there when you normally would get there, all of a sudden, what was bad is really good. Genesis chapter 45, verse 5. He says, now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. So Joseph is talking to his brothers. Don't y'all be mad at each other because y'all sold me off. This is what he's saying to them. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years have the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve your posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So it was in the end that Joseph clearly understood the purpose behind all that had transpired in his life up to this point. See, you can't judge the bad before you know the end. Because Joseph, if you looked at his story before it got to the end, it all looked bad. Looked like he's been going through all of this and looked like it's just been, you know how we say, my life is just, it's not turning out the way I wanted it. Just ain't what I wanted it to be. Because you judging the, the bad before the end. See, you, if you're going to experience kingdom increase, you can't judge the bad before the end. See, only God can take what we, what we would consider to be bad and bring good out of it. Yes. Yes. Go with me to Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 through 23. We're going somewhere here because I don't want to judge the bad before the end. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. The Bible says, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So there's a point in time where Jesus begins to minister specifically to his disciples. He begins to share with them things that are to come. He begins to share with them what it's going to be like over the, the, the course of the next few days in his life. And in discussing this with his disciples, he shares with them bad things. Ooh, I'm preaching better than you saying amen. Because what he says is, he said, listen, I got to go to Jerusalem. They said, well, all right, you know, Jerusalem ain't a bad place. You know, we're going to Jerusalem. But he says, I'm going to go and suffer. You know, we don't like that word. You know, that's, 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 that's the cuss word in church. Folks don't talk about suffering. Because we, you know, you, we don't really, uh, Christians shouldn't suffer. So he says, and suffer many things. Then he says, and be killed. Then he says, we're going to be raised again the third day. Now, before we begin to judge the bad, let's become one of the disciples for a moment. Now, we don't walk with you for three years. We don't experience miracles. Man, folk looking at us, talk, they talking about us behind our back, saying we crazy, following you, and you going to break out and say, you're you going to suffer, you're going to die, and you're going to be raised again on the third day? 
So what, what are we going to do? Oh, come on now. Now all of us, is, it's personal now. We following you because we don't see the stuff you're doing, but now you're telling me you're about to die? Well, let, let's, let's, let's keep walking a little bit. So it must, it's got to be bad because you're going to suffer and die. This is a bad situation. This must be bad because it means we no longer going to have you with us. Now, you've been with us these, these three years, and now people start to look at us a little different. We just used to be fishermen and tax collectors before, but now we disciples. Woo, praise the Lord. Now you about to go? The truth of the matter is we determine good or bad by our own selfish perspectives. See, you label something good because it felt good to you. Because you enjoyed it. Because you got pleasure out of it. You declared it was good. Consequently, you said something was bad because you didn't like it. You said it was bad because it interrupted your schedule. You said it was bad because it made life inconvenient for you. So really, good or bad is determined by our personal perspectives. That herein lies the fault. That we judge it based on us. How we feel, what we like, what we want. Oh, I, I, I know, I know. I'm preaching to me first. Verse 22. The Bible says, then Peter took him after Jesus said, I got to go to Jerusalem. I got to suffer stuff. I got to die. I got to be raised again on the third day. Peter pulled him aside. The Bible says, Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Let me correct you. Let me correct Jesus and give him the right perspective. Obviously, Jesus has got this thing twisted. So let me correct him. So Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Oh, my goodness. We can't let this happen. We, we, we men of God. How dare us let this happen to our Lord? You know, I was reading this and something very interesting. You and I would have counted this response by Peter as a noble response. Lord, far be it from us, let this happen to you. Such noble, what a noble gesture. We, we, we would have went to as far as saying, it's a display of loyalty and dedication. Look how dedicated Peter is to Jesus. Far be it from thee, Lord, we're not going to let this happen to you. Scribes and Pharisees and the elders and the council, what? No, we ain't going to let you suffer. No. Jesus, we're here. We for you. Mm. You know, we for you. <laughs> but, you know, as noble as that sounded when I read what Peter said, as loyal as I was, would have considered what Peter said, it is most amazing what Jesus' response was. <laughs> That's the amazing thing. Go with me to verse 23. But he turned, he being Jesus, he turns to Peter after the noble statement, after the loyalty that he displays and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. See, Jesus saw it for what it really was. An enemy using satanic reasoning to appease the flesh and try to stop the kingdom increase. Because you judged it before the end. Because you were trying to appease your flesh, you judged it before the end. You declared it was bad before the end because you didn't like it. Because it was going to leave you by yourself. Because it was going to mean that now you had to fend for yourself in his absence. So you declared, far be it from me. You look noble in what you said. You look loyal in how you displayed it. But it was really satanic. Because it was birthed out of flesh. See, if we're not careful, we're judging things out of flesh. 
If you have any higher education, you had to be tested. You had to be tested to see if you really learned what you say you learned. You had to go through some sometimes them surprise quizzes, them tests you didn't even know were coming. Because we need to know, do you know what you need to know before you go on to the next level? See, sometimes you declare that the test was bad until you got your grade back. Some of you still said it was bad when you got your grade back. <laughs> but the test and the grade helped you move to the next level. So what you considered to have been Oh my goodness, I am preaching better than you said, amen. What you declared was bad, that surprise quiz, that test I got to take, that exam that I noticed coming up. You declared it was bad, but it was the very thing that helped you move to the next level. See, John chapter 12, verse 24 for a moment. See, Jesus understood what was necessary. Amen. Bible says in John 12 and 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Jesus understood that death was necessary to produce much fruit. He understood this, but Peter was conflicted with it because after all, that ain't what I want. See, the bad was necessary to produce kingdom increase. Ah. Oh. This past week, we've had some work done in the house. And due to the nature of the work, we had to move a whole bunch of stuff. Whole bunch of stuff. Stuff, you, you know how you, you get in your house and you, you got stuff that just is there. Yes, and it's going to be there until you move. Because you don't want to move it. Well, we had to move all of that stuff. You'd be surprised how much stuff we found that brought back some very pleasant memories. Some things that we experienced that we was able to reflect on and just take in. But you know how much we hated moving it. <laughs> so the bad of us hating to have to go move that stuff, it presented some good experiences because it brought back some things that we had taken in from before. We were able to rejoice over and just reflect on. So the bad actually was good. So now all of the stuff that we don't need, we know we get rid of it. Even though we hated moving it, we found out what we didn't need. Oh, wow. See, sometimes the bad is really good. Oh, come on now. See, some of y'all think about y'all house now, see? Number two, I, 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 we, 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 gonna, we gonna only got three points, so we are, well, we're a third of the way done, so it's going to be all right. So don't judge the, the, number one, don't judge the bad before we know the end. Number two, everything that looks bad is not always bad. Everything that looks bad is not always bad. I remember when I was in... Um, I graduated from high school, and I was getting ready to, to go in the Marine Corps. And back then, I had gone to met, meet with my drill instructor. And uh, he said, did you, did you play football in high school? I said, yeah, yeah. He says, uh, you ever have two-a-day practices? I said, yeah. You know, we had, you practice twice a day. He said, yeah, that's the way boot camp is. <laughs> if you could do that, yeah, you're going to be fine. I thought two-a-day football practices was bad until I got into the Marine Corps and went to boot camp and realized two-a-day practices was good compared to that. But sometimes everything that seems bad is not really bad. It's just bad in our perspective. So if I could change my perspective, if I could change the way I look at stuff, if I could just turn it a little bit more so I could get a better perspective, maybe it's not bad after all. 
Let's look at some text. Y'all ready? Romans chapter 11, verse 7, New Living Translation. Romans chapter 11, verse 7. So this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found the favor of God they're looking for so earnestly. You know, it's amazing, before I go on, that most of us today are assuming that Israel is God's chosen people. I don't know where we get this from. I don't know why we do this. I don't know why. That's just the way people look. The scriptures declares that you are a chosen generation. That means you're God's chosen people. No, I ain't hating on Israel. I'm not anti-Semitic and all of that stuff. I'm just saying, let's see, we, we talk about changing our perspective. So why don't we get a biblical one? Let, let, me, let me finish the text so you see what I'm saying. So this is the situation. Most of the people of Israel have not found the favor of God they are looking for so earnestly. A few have, the ones God has chosen. But the hearts of the rest were hardened. So most of Israel's current population is hard-hearted to who Jesus is. I don't know if you've been watching the news lately. They just were trying to pass the bill that you couldn't even, you know, convert people in Israel to Christians. You couldn't share about who Jesus is. They were literally trying to pass a bill in the place where Jesus was born that you can't. Use him for conversion to Christianity. Anybody else think that's absurd or is that just all right with you? See, they missed the Messiah because of hard heartedness. I don't know if you're aware, but they're in the, in the process of looking at building the third temple. Building the third temple so they can start doing offerings again. But my question is, who are you doing the offerings to? The Messiah has already come. And the next one is false. And he is coming. Some people say he's here. Verse 8, New Living Translation. As the scriptures say, God has put them into a deep sleep. So Israel is in a deep sleep. To this day, he has shut their eyes so they do not see and closed their ears so they do not hear. So God allowed this to happen where they couldn't see who the Messiah was. They couldn't hear who the Messiah was, except for a few that he chose. Are we OK? We just read the Bible. Verse 11, King James of chapter 11. Romans 11 and 11, King James. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, now here you, now, now he's going to show us what was really going on. Because, now wait a minute. Before we go further. So God would allow them to not see and to not hear. That's bad. I mean, come on, that's bad. Work with me a little bit. That's bad. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. That's you. That's you. It has come unto the non-Jew. So because of their fall, salvation has come unto us. And look why he did it. For to provoke them to jealousy. So salvation came to the rest of the world so that the Jews could be provoked to jealousy by the world turning to Christ. So what was bad, God used for good. The reason you know the name Jesus as Christ Jesus as Lord, Jesus as Messiah is because Israel rejected him. We'll deal with that a little bit later. Verse 12. Now, if the fall of them 
be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. Now, in the end, watch what God does with them, even though it seemed bad. What am I saying? Even though, see, there's a dispensation or an age where God has opened up salvation to the world. And it seems that this age and this dispensation, Israel has rejected Christ. But that ain't the end. You can't judge it to the end. Oh, let's can't, y'all want to y'all, y'all want to peek and see the end. Let, let, let's let's turn the page and peek and see the end. Okay, okay, okay. You know, I you know some some books you don't need to read all the way through. You know, you just turn to the end and you can see what's going on. You know, Revelation chapter seven. Verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Holding the four winds of the earth. That the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. You know, you, God can stop the wind from blowing. Amen. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of who? So God, he ain't through with Israel. He's sealing 144,000. 12,000 from each individual tribe who are going to preach the gospel in the midst of the tribulation. He's not through with Israel. Don't judge the bad until the end. Because even though they rejected him, it opened the door for us. And the end of that dispensation, he's still going back to use Israel. Romans 11 and 33 says it this way. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. What God is doing, we don't always realize. So we can't afford to judge something as good or bad simply based on what we like, simply based on our perspective. At most, you, you, you got 70, 80, 90 years or whatever of life here. How can you judge what God is doing? Whether it's bad or good, we're judging it based on how we feel, how we like it, or how we don't like it. All right. Give me a few minutes. Point number three. First off, remember, we, 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 we don't, we, we don't want to judge something as bad until the end. Let's not judge it until the end. And everything that seems bad is not always bad. And thirdly, listen to this one. All kingdom increase came out of what was bad. All kingdom increase came out of what was bad. I said, what do you mean? Stuff happened to me was good. Really? Did you, did, how far did you look back? How far did you really look back to what you said was good? Let me, let, me, let me look back far enough for you. Isaiah chapter 53. Shall we? Isaiah chapter 53, verse 2, New Living Translation. My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. Do you know that when Jesus grew up, he didn't have a halo over his head? Did you know that? Did you know that people would have seen Jesus and not even notice him? He was not so compelling that people would look and go like, something about him. Because see, then it would have been a fleshly thing. Because people would have judged by their eyes. Oh, I'm preaching better than you saying amen. 
People literally would look at Jesus and there was nothing that attracted them to him. Contrary to all of the pictures that we see with the halo and all it. No, 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 no. Nothing like that. Let, let, let's, let's keep going. And I'm giving you the Bible for what I'm saying. Now, now, let's look at something else. I said all kingdom increase came out of what was bad. Look at this, verse 3. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows. He was acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. I know you said, well, you know, that, that wasn't me. That was the Jews. No, that was you. That was you. That was me. Because it was our sin that made us do it. Well, preacher, I didn't look at him like that. Oh, yes, you did. See, it's your perspective now. Because you don't want to deal with the fact that you were jacked up. He was despised and rejected. People, everybody wasn't getting on Jesus' bandwagon. If you ever felt like you've been rejected, I want you to know you weren't the first. You ever felt like everybody hated you, I want you to know you're not the first. You ever felt like everybody was against you, you standing alone. Why don't anybody understand I'm trying to do the right thing? Oh, you're not alone. You weren't the first. Said he was despised and we did not care. You know, you ever see somebody, they just hated, they just, you just despise them. And nobody even cared that they hated. Just, 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 just go with me a little bit. Verse four. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was my weakness Jesus was carrying. It was your weakness. Wait, wait, wait a minute. You know that proclivity that you have to do those things in the dark that don't nobody else know about. It was that weakness that he was carrying. You know, that tendency that you have that you try to safeguard from somebody else ever seeing it. That's what he was carrying. That thing that you don't want nobody else to know about, he was carrying it. Mm -hmm. I, don't worry, I got some too. He was carrying them too. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. See, you know, this is one thing I, I don't understand sometimes. I understand that all of us, the Bible says mourn with those that mourn and rejoice with those that rejoice. I understand that there's a time to mourn, there's a time to rejoice. But I don't understand when we stay in sorrow. I don't understand when we keep a pity party. I don't understand when we really don't like when somebody else is happy. And the reason I don't understand is not because I'm judging the person. The reason I don't understand is because it says it was our sorrows that weighed him down. So if it was my sorrow that was weighing him down, why am I walking around in sorrow now? The only reason that I could possibly come up with that we would be caught up in sorrow and pity parties and all this is if you don't know that he already carried it. So what you said, Pastor, you never down. No, I have some down moments. Moments. But I'm not staying there. Got to go. Got to go. Got to get up from here. I'm not acting like it's always been perfect. It's been the way I've always wanted. No, far be it. But the reality is, can't stay there. Yeah. Jesus already carried my sorrows. Can't stay there. Yes. Really? So yet it was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God. You ever seen somebody that's going through something and you go like, yeah, they deserve it. Do you know that we looked at Jesus and said he deserves what he get? That's just God punishing him for what he did. Even though he was sinless. Just assume that he deserved that. He must be a horrible person for that to happen to him. 
Once again, just our perspective, you know, the way we look at things. And of course, you know, our perspective is always right to us. <laughs> it's my opinion after all. You, really, you, you recognize ain't nobody else on the inside of your head threatening your opinion. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. Verse five, but he was pierced for our rebellion. Do you know the nails going through his feet and his hands was because we rebellious? No, no, let let, let me fix it, what we understand. Because, you know, sometimes we say words and, and, you know, we, we, we smooth it over with religious jargon. The nails that pierced Jesus' feet and hands was because we don't want to do it his way. We want to do it our way. See, that's rebellion. When you, when you, you know, for those of us that may remember when our children were small and you would tell them to do something and you would tell them to do the right thing and they would just, not that they didn't know the right thing, they chose not to do. See, there's a, there's a point where we discipline children. It ain't because we're mad. It's because they're rebellious. Amen. See, now, when, when, when you're when, when you picking up a brick, throwing it at your child, no, that's something else. That, that's, that's something else there. We did, that's a whole other, that's, that's another thing we need. But when your child is rebellious, it's time to discipline them. Because you have to understand. Now, I know some, some of us, we grew up like that. Now, you know, they call that child abuse now. But I understand back then, that was just the way it was. You ducked and you kept going. <laughs> you, you, you learn. We, we can move a little quicker back then, you know. <laughs> Kids now, they, you know, so they, they don't know how to move like that. We knew how to move because we was outside playing and stuff. We had learned all this stuff. Kids did, but they ain't know that kind of stuff, so. Just saying, it was a different world. But now, he was pierced for our rebellion. Because we don't want it, we, didn't, we don't want to do it God's way. We want to do it our way. The Bible says he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. So all of this happened to Jesus because of us. Not because of him. He was beaten so we could be whole. So you run around giving everybody a piece of your mind. That's why you're not whole. He was beaten so we could be whole. Whole in your mind, whole in your soul. Why are you feeling less than whole? This is all the benefit. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me keep moving. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. In other words, with his stripes, See, this is, this is my thing. I am not wondering, did Jesus get beat or not? See, there's certain things, Kia, once we convince ourselves. So if you're convinced that Jesus was beaten, you should be convinced that you could be healed. Because with his stripes, we are healed. Once you convinced that he was beaten, that his back was ripped open. The Bible says in Psalms, literally, his back was ripped open to the point where you could see some of his organs. That was so you could be healed. I remember a time, I know, I know, I know some of y'all, he don't look that old. Well, I grew up around old people, okay? Just where, that's just the way it is. I did. I really did. But I remember a time where you didn't go to the doctor for everything. Watch this. Now, I'm, I'm going to really, really date myself. I remember when there wasn't no such thing as health insurance. I remember when we didn't have none. I remember when I first learned about health insurance. I'm like, wow, health insurance? Wow. Because I remember when the doctor used to come to your house. Oh, some of y'all going like, what, what? Mother, you, you hear me, right? Come 
Oh, come on. When the doctor had the little black bag they bring with him. Oh, come on now. For the rest of y'all that don't know nothing about that, watch gun smoke, okay? <laughs> watch gun smoke and y'all it'll catch y'all up. It'll catch the rest of y'all up. Need to watch you some gun smoke and you'll be all right. Yeah, you should bring that little bag. But see, with his stripes, we're healed. These people knew something. Our forefathers, they, are, they understood healing. Now, I'm not saying don't go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. That ain't going to stop you from being healed. He's still the Lord that healeth us. I'm just saying sometimes we can get so caught up that our perspective, it starts to change, starts to be altered. And we stop, we stop believing what we ought to believe. So, see, when you get to a point, listen, you get to a point that some things doctors can't do. Then what you going to do? You better know that Jesus, with his stripes, I am healed before that point. The Bible says, so he was pierced for our rebellion, he was crushed for our sins, he was beaten so we could be whole, he was whipped so we could be healed. So yeah, I want my healing. I want it. I ain't playing with it, with his stripes, I am healed. I ain't waiting on somebody to say, well, you know, what's that scripture again? No, no, I'm saying it. I'm declaring what, because I know he was whipped and I believe I'm healed with his stripes. Verse 6, we'll close out. All of us, that's what the Bible says, all of us. That, that little bitty three-letter word, all, it's inclusive. People talking about Christianity is not inclusive. Yes, it is. All of us are sinners. That's real inclusive. All of us. It ain't citing what kind of sin. It ain't doing, well, you are this and you are that. No, no, all of us born into sin. Born. So it says in verse 6, all of us like sheep have strayed away. Every last one of us went the opposite direction of Christ. Yeah, without fault, with, uh, I mean, without fail, every one of us did. Yeah, I don't care what your economic situation is. Well, you know, I, I, you know, I, um, my family. So I don't care. Still born in the sin. Every one of us. I don't care what your, uh, your education status is. You never get a degree to get you past sin. Don't happen. You won't get you won't get educated beyond this. It's going to take the shed blood of Jesus to deal with this. All of us are straight away. The Bible says we have left God's past to follow our own. We look for our own righteousness, our own things that make us feel good, all all things that make us feel good about our perspective of ourselves. See, I'm, you, you hear people, I'm not that bad. Really? What's not that bad when you're born in the sin? That's the way each and every one of us is. My way is not right. His way is. So watch this. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We've left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Do you know, just for a moment, let's think about what this says. Every sin that you have committed, every sin that you will commit. I want you to hear this, and I want you to understand this today before you walk out of this place. Every sin that you have committed, every sin that you will commit has already been put on Jesus. You just need to accept it. You just need to accept the free gift that is already done. It's already been taken care of. I accept it. I'm not trying to do my own way. I'm not trying to figure this out. I'm not trying to work another way around, find another perspective, do this thing on my own. Jesus, you got this. You took care of it all. I know I don't deserve it. Because you know, there's people like, well, I, I knew this one guy. This is, for, this is a true story. I used to work with him uh, years ago. And he felt that my life is so bad, no matter what, I'm going to hell. 
I can't be saved. I'm just terrible. And he wasn't that bad of a person in the sense of, you know, he wasn't, a, he wasn't Hitler or something, you know, okay? He wasn't like that. But I'm saying he just felt like that. It was his perspective that was the problem. Because Jesus had actually taken all his sins that he had ever committed and that he would ever commit and had already taken them and nailed them to his cross. But he just wouldn't change his perspective. So what about you today? Every sin that you will ever commit, every sin that you have committed has already been dealt with on the cross. But are you willing to accept Christ as your savior or you want it your own way? You want to keep doing your own thing. See, because listen to, let me close with this. Let me close with this. Every kingdom increase has come out of what was bad. Because all the bad happened to Jesus so all the good could happen to you. He was the propitiation for our sin. He was the substitute. He was the sacrifice for our sins. So the bad that should have been on us, he took so the good we can have now. See, this ain't about working my way to heaven. This ain't about me trying to do all of the right things, cross every T, dot every I. No, it's about me accepting, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. I have messed up. My life is jacked up. I'm painting a pretty picture to everybody else. I'm trying to make it look right. But Lord, you know. And I believe what you've done. I believe it. And I accept it. I'm not running away from it. I'm not trying to avoid it. I'm not trying to overlook it. I'm not trying to drink it away. I'm not trying to sex it out. I'm not trying to just get away from this thing by go running away. I'm going to face it so I can fix it. So you have to understand this thing is not about getting away from it. Oh, I just need some rest. I just need my time off. Oh, I could just get away. No, 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 no. It's because you're conscious on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit is pricking your conscience. He is dealing with you before it's too late. And you don't know what else to do. I'm here today to tell you what to do. You may be seated. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm here to tell you what to do. It's the Holy Spirit that's dealing with you. It's because he loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He's drawing you with his loving kindness. He's calling your name. It's a personal thing. We say, well, how come I'm the only one feeling like this? See, it's because he's dealing with you. It's personal. He wants you. You say, well, I, I, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't think this was going to be. Yeah, God knew where you was going to be today and what you needed to hear. Every head bow, eyes are closed. Just for a moment, let me just talk to you. Let me just talk to you. Saints are praying. Saints are praying. Saints are praying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, maybe you're here and you say, well, listen, I had a relationship with Jesus, but I walked away. Yeah, the Bible says we all strayed. We all strayed. We look for our own path. And, we, and nobody looking at you funny and crazy and all of that. We all strayed. But there's breath in your body. So it's not too late. Nobody's looking down on you in a casket, so it's not too late. You still have breath. You can make a decision right now. You can change your perspective right now. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry for walking away from you. Sorry for denying you. Peter denied the Lord thrice. Jesus didn't kick him away, kick him out. He said, matter of fact, go tell Peter. Called him by name. Go tell Peter. Called him by name. Yeah, I, I need to meet him. I want him to come see me. See, God's not throwing us away because we made mistakes. 
because we done things wrong, because we went back to doing it our own way. He said, no, come on back. I got something for you. I want to use you. I want to use you. I want a relationship with you personally. I want, us grow, I want us to grow beyond that point where you thought you couldn't go no further. Come on back. Let me show you what I can do. See, this, this is the way God does us because the Bible says he loved us with an everlasting love. That love don't stop. That love don't stop. You want to hear something else? When we were sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to get it right. He demonstrated his love for us when we were in the worst state ever. So today, while you're here, maybe you want to rededicate your life. Lord, I'm sorry. I want to come back to you. Or maybe you're saying, listen, I didn't have a relationship with Christ. I have never known Jesus as the Messiah. I have never known him as my own personal Lord and Savior. But today I see that I need to surrender my way to him. I need to surrender my life to him. And I believe that this Jesus is the Christ. He is the son of the living God. I believe that he lived a sinless life. He died for my sins. He was buried and he rose again on the third day. And I'm willing right now to accept him as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm willing to rededicate my life to him. If either of those categories fit you, one, you're willing to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ right now. Number two, you're saying, listen, I want a personal relationship with him right now. This is not about embarrassing anybody. I'm just simply going to ask you, lift up your hand and just raise your hand. That's me. Preacher, that's me. I want a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I see those hands. I see those hands. I am not playing with this. I don't want to die and spend all eternity in hell. I believe Jesus has already been my substitute. It's all about what Christ has done. It's because he loves us, you all. He honestly loves us. He's not here to condemn you. He's not holding a lightning bolt over your head. He is wanting to have a personal relationship with you. My last appeal, is anyone else? I saw those hands. Is there anyone else? You, you're willing to be honest right now. That's me. I want a relationship with Christ. I want to renew my relationship with him. I don't want to walk out of here knowing that Jesus suffered all of this for me and I not accept him. Knowing that he did all of this for me and I denied him. Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. Not today. Not today. Is there anyone else before I close? We're going to close out and pray. We're going to close out and pray because I believe God is already doing a wonderful work. The Holy Spirit is already uh, bearing witness to the truth, even in our midst now. While every head is bowed and eyes are closed, we're going to pray. For those of you who have raised your hand, I'm just going to ask you to pray with us. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. I believe you died for me. I believe you were buried. And I believe you rose again on the third day. Please accept my life as I surrender to you. Make me, mold me into all you destined me to be. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we thank you for your kingdom coming and your will being done in the earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hello. Thank you for taking the opportunity to tune in with us on today. I believe it's a tremendous blessing to be able to hear and receive from the word of God. I want to take an opportunity also to challenge you as you move further in not just hearing, but obeying the word of God. The Bible speaks in Romans of the fact that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. However, it doesn't stop there. It also lets us know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And then it leads us further to let us know that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. I want to give you an opportunity to meet the Savior today. An opportunity to meet Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God.
the one who died for our sins, who was buried, and who was raised again from the dead. Today, you can know him personally. I want you to take this opportunity to pray with me. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I know that you are the son of the living God, and I believe that you gave your life for me. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I thank you now for saving me. Amen and amen. Listen, if you've prayed that prayer, you've just accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You are now part of the family of God. Your life has been changed forever. I want to encourage you now to be a part of a Bible-believing church. Somewhere where you can be fed the Word of God. The Bible says man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It's important that you're hearing from God. It's important that you're growing in God's grace. I want to encourage you. Find a place that you can connect with other like-minded believers and grow in the things of God. It will make all the difference in your new life as you live as unto the Lord. I also want to encourage those that may be watching now, and maybe you're already saved, maybe you're already part of a, a, a church, and you're just wanting to find somewhere where you can continue to grow in the things of God and add or supplement your faith. Thank you for taking this opportunity and allowing us to be a part of that supplement. Also, I want to say this. Some of you all may be watching and you say, well, how can I give to that ministry? How can I sow into that ministry? Well, listen, I want to encourage you to take the opportunity. We have an app that you can actually uh, download to your phone and you can give to this ministry at any time that you want to. Or feel free to go to our website. You can go to our website and on our website, you will find uh, an opportunity to donate. There's a donate button. Click on that button and it will further direct you into being able to give into this ministry. Listen, I believe that giving is a gain and not a loss. Jesus says it's more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible lets us know that he increases the fruits of our righteousness. When we give, the Bible lets us know that he causes us to increase. He increases the fruits of our righteousness. It's all because God has allowed us to partake in the work that he is doing in the earth. And that is giving. That is giving of his son unto us. So when we give, we have an opportunity to imitate what God has been doing for us all along because it wasn't that we deserved it. It was that God was so good that he was giving his own son on our behalf. I pray that the message has been a blessing to you and I encourage you to come out, be a part of what we're doing. We're located at 740 North Main Street here in High Point, North Carolina. Feel free to join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. or every Wednesday evening at 7.20 p.m. God bless you and thank you again for being with us. God bless.